Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church. I'm not sure why we have a blank screen, Phil. I'll keep going anyway. It's great to see you all here this morning, and I'd like to open our service with a psalm, Psalm 61, verses 2 to 4, which says, From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Today, my prayer for each and every one of you here and online watching is that you would be led to the place that is higher than us, that you would invite Jesus in where he will move his freedom, his peace and his strength into your life in ways that you can't possibly imagine. Amen. And we're going to join in singing, Great Are You, Lord.
reading comes from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to D1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent Wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that spreaded and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as they as the spirit enabled them now there were staying in jerusalem god fearing jews from every nation under heaven when they heard this sound a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken 
Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of the God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they had had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my, pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the God, our God. We might invite all the children to come and sit up the front if you'd like to come up here, guys, and take a seat. That's all the kids, yep. Come down and get comfy. Just down on the floor, yep. Wow, there's so many of you today. This is awesome. Yep, so we're going to turn around because very soon you're going to see something pretty cool on the screen. I know the year ones are very proud of what they have done and what they're going to show you, so make sure you can see the screen. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if you guys have figured it out yet, but today we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. And I know lots of you are probably wondering, well, what on earth is Pentecost? So I might, I might tell you, hey? It's a very special time in the Bible. The disciples, that's Jesus' friends, followers, and other Christians, they receive something. They receive something very special, a very special gift, the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you why. Well, actually, you ones are going to tell you why. God didn't pick any day for this to happen. God always has a plan. We know this. This day was um, no exception. Pentecost, it was 50 days after Easter. And you guys know what that really, really special thing that happened on Easter Sunday was? Matilda. And then what happened that was so incredible after that? Yeah, he rose from the dead, didn't he? Um, so not long after that, after he rose from the dead, Jesus went back. He went back to heaven. <clears throat> but he said before he left, he told his friends, his disciples, his followers, he said, soon something is going to happen. You will receive the Holy Spirit. So his friends, his followers, they were waiting and waiting, probably a little bit impatiently. I know we're not good at waiting for things either. So year ones, they're going to share the story of you, for you what happened after Jesus went back to heaven and they were waiting very patiently. And this is what Pentecost is all about. So this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world but people messed up it up. God had a plan to rescue them. He sent his son Jesus to save everyone. 
so we will be with him. To save us, Jesus has to defeat death. After he did that, he went to heaven. But first he told his friends, the disciples to wait. Because he was going to send them a gift. The Holy Spirit. So they waited. There was a giant party going outside. A party that was called Pentecost. With people from all over the world, the disciples stayed together in the sun, waiting. Suddenly, there was a huge loud noise, like a really strong wind. It must be pretty loud, because lots of people came to see what's going on. Then <laughs> okay. fire came down from heaven and landed on people's heads. Wasn't like fire we used to. It didn't burn them. This fire was way cooler. Just a bar. <laughs> the disciples the disciples started to speak different languages languages they didn't know until then they spoke greek hebrew arabic all sorts of language, languages <laughs> uh, it was a miracle people were amazed Some were a little confused. Some didn't know what to think. But the disciples knew it was a special day. A guy named Peter spoke up. He reminded the crowd who Jesus was and God's rescue plan for them. Lots and lots of people believed. Anyone who believes in Jesus has the Holy Spirit. God has given them the Holy Spirit. And we can have the Holy Spirit too. But that's not the end of the story. So this is where we are in the story. Oh, that sounds like a really crazy day. Fire coming on people's heads, people speaking different languages that they hadn't learnt. That would be good if you could start speaking a different language. I wish I was there because it sounds like such an amazing day. And the disciples were waiting for a gift. It's like waiting for a really cool birthday present that your mum and dad have given you hints about. You're getting something really special. You just have to wait. You can't pick. Just have to wait. And I feel a bit sorry for those disciples because they had to wait a really long time. And they didn't know when this gift that Jesus had spoken about was going to appear. But you know what? I reckon this is one of the best gifts that God has given us. And he's given us so many things to be grateful for. But this one is like God living inside you. So if you ever feel sad or you ever feel worried or you ever feel like you're not sure what you should do, you can ask the Holy Spirit if you believe in God because the Holy Spirit is living in your heart right now. So today we remember that most special gift that God has given us, the Holy Spirit. We're now going to join in and sing another song called Heal Our Land.
Well, good morning. It's great to see you all here on Pentecost Sunday. Um, it's great to gather together in God's church to hear his word spoken into our lives. That's what it's all about, really. Um, yes, Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday is remembering that particular celebration where the disciples spoke in other tongues. But to apply, apply that to your lives... <coughs> My voice has expired. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, to apply that to our lives, what I want to do this morning is look at the Old Testament reading for Pentecost, which is from Ezekiel. It's the Valley of Dry Bones. I don't know if you've come across that one before, but it's a great story. I'm going to read it to you. The hand of the Lord was on me. This is Ezekiel speaking. And he brought me out, of the, out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley that was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. 
He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the bones. Thank you, Assistant. Um, the Sovereign Lord says to these bones, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I was prophesying there was a noise, a rattling sound and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked at tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll put my spirit in you and you'll live. I'll settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and have done it declares the Lord. <clears throat> That's a great story, but it's actually a vision. So it didn't actually happen, not like that. It was a vision that Ezekiel had. Just putting that in context, the, the people of Israel, were they, they were saying, our bones are dried up. They'd lost everything. They'd lost their country, they'd lost their freedom, they'd lost their hope. So you could say economically they were struggling. They were homeless, they were enslaved, so not many things were going right for them. <clears throat> they had said, you know, how come? You know, God promised that we would be a great nation. <clears throat> God promised we would be okay. But we're not okay, we're not doing very well. It's like our bones are dried up, we're, we're depressed, we're hopeless, we have no future. So this message is for people who feel they have no future, feel like they're bone weary, feel like there's no real hope, sort of speaks into today's life, doesn't it? You know, we've got a pandemic, we've had lots of drought, we've even had floods, we've had fires, we've had all sorts of things. We're wondering, what, what's God doing? How, how is he working in our lives? We need someone to speak into our situation because it feels like our bones have dried up. And so... Ezekiel, the prophet of God, had this experience. As he was pondering, as he was praying about the plight of the people that, he, that were under his care or under his, uh, in his parish, if you like, he was meditating and he was given this vision. <clears throat> we don't know exactly how that happened, whether it was like a dream or something or, or um, you know, like a scene in front of him unfolding but more likely something that happened in his own mind. And that's usually how visions work. Uh, but it was a vision given to him and, and these things opened up before him. He saw a valley of dry bones and he walked backwards and forwards among these uh, dead things. Uh, bones, you know, they have no life. Uh, the life has left them and there's no, they can't do anything. You can't expect anything of them. And so he, he looked at them and God said to him, Son of man, can these bones live? 
And that may be the question in your mind about your life or about the life around you, about your community, about your work or about the world. Can this world last? Can, can there be hope in my life? Is my future okay? Here's lesson one from this story. Maybe a tragedy, maybe something going on around you, maybe disaster, maybe in that disaster is a question from God. There's, you may be going through something tough at the moment, but in there, if you listen carefully, there's a question from God. Are you going to get through this okay? Maybe God had, has his own little are you okay day. Maybe the question is coming from God, are you okay? It's an open question, could go either way. Son of man, can these bones live? You know, probably the right answer is no, <laughs> you know, looking at them. <coughs> Listen how Ezekiel answers. He says, Lord, you alone know. <coughs> how do you answer God? when that question comes to you? Are you going to remain with only your own knowledge? Ezekiel's knowledge was dead bones can't live. That was his experience. Dry bones don't run around. Dry bones don't live. Son of man, can these bones live? Ezekiel goes, oh, I suppose he was free to answer how he liked because it was his vision. <coughs> so he says, you, Lord, know. I'm not interested in what I know right now, Lord. What I know doesn't get me anywhere. What I know is going to finish this vision, vision fairly quickly. What I know, there's no life in it. But you know, Lord, your knowledge is a little bit beyond mine and I want to know what you know. I want to be open to your knowledge at this point. I want, to, I want to be open to your future for this particular moment, for these dead bones, these dry bones. See, your answer to that question, are you okay, is your life going to be okay, is very important. Because if you stick with your own knowledge, then that's all you've got. If you open yourself up to what God knows, things can change. God knows so much more than us. God has a plan for us. And when we open ourselves to his knowledge, we open ourselves to his plan, to his future, and maybe, just maybe, my dry bones can live. So, what happens next? You, Lord, know... <coughs> God doesn't give him the answer. He gives him something to do. He says, well then, speak to the bones. Funny thing to do. Speak to dry bones, but okay. It's a vision. Anything can happen. Speak to the bones. Actually prophesy to the bones. You've probably heard the word prophesy before. Um, often in, in common language being a prophecy means that you talk about something that is to come you know you foretell the future that's actually not what prophecy is about in the Bible it often talks about the future you know there were prophecies about Jesus there are prophecies you know way back then a thousand years later someone's going to come and save the world kind of thing. There was a prophecy. A lot of people are interested in the book of Revelation because it's got prophecies in it. There are things they say, well, we're going to try and read these, these words and find out what's going to happen in the future. <coughs> it's a fairly narrow word from prophecy and, you know, like you're going to meet a tall, dark, handsome stranger or something. That's... Like that's a party trick. That's not really the prophecy that God is talking about. Prophecy from God 
is speaking things into existence. Like prophecy is, yes, it's foretelling something, it's, it's saying that something is going to happen in the future, but when the prophet speaks the words of the prophecy, his speaking makes it happen. So it happens because he said it. It's not that he knew what was going to happen in the future, but actually happens because he said it. You know, like when God said, let there be light, and there was light. It wasn't that God was saying, actually, I reckon in the future there's going to be light. You wait and see. There's going to be light. I know there's going to be light, and light appeared. No. God spoke, and his word made the light appear. So his speaking brought it into existence. You know, let there be this, this, whatever it was, and there was. Let there be land, and there was. Let there be people, and there was. Because he spoke. That's prophecy in its, in its main usage of the word in the Bible. So when God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones, he's saying your words are going to have power. So speak to those bones and bring them to life. It's interesting what happens next because Ezekiel does exactly as he was told. He prophesies to the bones and they don't come to life. See that the instruction from God was speak to the bones and tell them to have, you know, tendons and flesh and blood and and uh, skin over the top and breath. So do that. And so he does that and everything else happens but the breath. So it sounds like Ezekiel is kind of an apprentice prophet. You know, he's, he hasn't quite got it right. He doesn't, God doesn't berate him for that. He then says to him, look, now speak, now speak to the breath and tell the breath to go in. So there's, a, there's two stages. One is the body and the other is the breath. And so he, he then says to Ezekiel, speak to the breath. Um, it's always good to have somebody mentoring you. That as you're walking your Christian walk, you may get various bits right. You may get most of it right, but some little bit missing and it doesn't quite work for you and, and you're not quite progressing in your faith and you don't really know how it all works and how it comes about it's good to have somebody older and wiser someone who's been at this a while to say well try praying this way open yourself up to this possibility read this bit in scripture and it opens up new possibilities for us mentoring is vital it's vital for the church unfortunately we so see so little of it so if you want to discover more of faith, if you want to see God working in your life, get alongside of somebody. Talk about it with somebody. Mentoring, step by step. Find someone who's got a bit of experience in the faith and walk with them through it. Okay, back to prophecy. So he prophesies to the breath. And he has the authority then to bring movement into this body of people. And they all rise up and they become a great army. Interesting, interesting choice of words there. They don't become a big city, they don't become a great crowd, they become an army. Why, why do they become an army? It says that, um, that they, uh, they come together and they're raised up and they become a great army. And I think the choice of that word is important. It's not just a mob. It's not just a group of people. It's an army. You see, an army has... It's not that they all you know, stood up and they got camo uniforms on or something like that or all dressed the same or had weapons or anything like that. But we're told they were an army. I think that we can say that an army, as opposed to another group of people, 
An army has a purpose. Army is all about the mission and the purpose. Everything that happens in the army is all about the pointy end. It's all about the, the front line, the purpose, uh, so that people can go forward, so that it can all happen on the battleground. That's what the army is all about. So whatever happens in the army, even someone with an office job, even somebody who, you know, sorts out things or, or repairs vehicles or, you know, gets uniforms together, even whatever happens in the army, it's all for the purpose. There's one purpose, and that is that front line, that ability to be able to car carry on some military activity. So, it, so everything's geared to the mission and the purpose. This is what God produces. When God speaks life into a situation, suddenly there is purpose. Suddenly there's, there's a destiny. Some, suddenly there's a mission. God has breathes hope into a community and there is no greater hope than people with a purpose, people with a mission, people with a destiny. It brings life. It itself brings, brings hope to a community. When you know your purpose, when you know why you're here, when you know that your job is important and that you have a mission, God breathes life into you and gives you a mission, calls you to a purpose. God loves his people and all things work together for good for those who are called called ahead according to his purpose. Sometimes you've got to just slow down and let those words come out in good order. What, um, what's hopeless in your life? Where are the dry bones in your life? If there are dry bones, speak to the bones. Speak to the hopelessness. Often we like to speak about our hopelessness. Often we speak about our troubles. You know, we get together and talk to people, I mean, that's a good idea too. A lot of people don't talk about their troubles and get themselves in all sorts of strife. But sometimes that's as far as we go. God is giving us another step. He's saying, actually, there's new life that you can breathe into a situation. You can speak to the hopelessness. You can speak to somebody else's hopelessness. Maybe you can come alongside of somebody who's going through a really rough time now and speak with them, but then speak into, the, prophesy into their hopelessness. Bring life to their hopelessness. Prophecy can do that. That's why I love saying, you know, at the end of... A message, you know, we've got this little thing that we say, you know, pastors say this thing. It's, it's in the old hymn book. You know, at the end of a sermon, you say this thing. It's from the Bible, but you say this thing. And it's the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and always. It's a funny little thing that we tack on the end of a sermon. Why do we do that? Because it's speaking peace into your life. I love saying things like that because I'm doing it with the authority of God and speaking peace into your life. So receive that as peace. It, how you receive it is up to you. You can receive, oh, that's nice. Or you can receive it as, I'm going to take that peace as my own. I'm going to claim it because that's a prophecy from God and I'm going to claim it. So I'd encourage you to grab that with attitude. You know, the blessing at the end, blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, no, there's another one. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine. Listen to those words. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. That can be yours. You grab it because that's said with the authority of God that's given to us by God to prophesy into your life. And that can bring life into what was previously dry bones. Prophesy into your suffering. Prophesy into the suffering of others. Prophesy into uh, where there's no peace. Bring peace. You can speak it into being because God has given you that authority by virtue of you being a child of God. 
what needs prophecy? Where's the dry bones in your life? As we go through the rest of the service, just keep thinking through that. Where are the dry bones in my life? What are the dry bones that I can see? I'm going to speak life. As we go from here, let's speak life into those situations. As we go from here, let's speak life into the lives of others. Let's speak life into the life of our kids. Let's speak life into the life of our friends, our spouses. Or is that spice? I don't know, the plural of spouse. Um, Speak life into the life of your parents. You know, uh, God's peace be with you uh, may, may not be your natural way of speaking but find a way to speak life find a way to prophesy you've been given that power we can prophesy we can prophesy life into dry bones that's what pentecost is about it's the new life that that has been breathed into the church new life that's been breathed into the people of god let's start speaking life into the lives of others During this Pentecost season, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how the Holy Spirit impacts our life. How these flames on the heads of some people ages ago, how that impacts us today and how we can move in in the power of the Spirit to bring to bear God's life into daily life. Just how we do that, how that works, what that looks like in our life. That's what we want to start talking about. Speak life. Amen. Here we go. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, you are our amazing God. You created the whole world for us to enjoy. Thank you for all the animals. Dear Lord, please look after our families and friends and keep them safe. Be with the people who are sick and in hospital. Lord, thank you for the rain you have sent. Lord, thank you for all the flowers and trees. Thank you for Mr Wolf who looks after the gardens around the school. Dear Lord, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to watch over us. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. That sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we are going to finish with a song that's actually called The Blessing. I'm not going to stand in the way. Um, so as this blessing is sung to you this morning, grab hold of it with both hands.
Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all here this morning. A big thank you to Year Ones. That was awesome, guys. Thanks for coming along and helping us out this morning. Hey, we really appreciate all that you do. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Uh, and also thanks to Mrs. Boyd and Mrs. Augustine and, and Mrs. Dionysius for coming along as well. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, just got a few announcements this morning. Uh, so, yes, we see on the screen there. Um, so today we have the Year Ones next week. Uh, in this 10.30 service. We also have the Year 6s coming along to help out um, and get involved with our church service. Um, so yeah, come along and support those guys as well. It'd be great to see you all again. Uh, also, next Sunday afternoon, for anyone who's interested, um, we're having a, a bit of a fun games afternoon in our church hall over here. Um, so if you're interested in playing board games or card games or anything like that, come along. About 12.30, 1 o'clock we'll start. Um, Come along, just get involved. It's just a fun afternoon of, of uh, playing a few games. Uh, and if you've got a favourite game that you'd like to play, bring it along and share it with us. That'd be great. Um, also, Marie, do you want to talk on this one? Okay, um, I'm just here to um, promote um, this event on Tuesday the 8th of June. It's at 10.30 in the morning when um, Julie Krauss from... Australian Lutheran World Service should be speaking in the church hall here. So um, uh, a lot of you might give donations to Australian Lutheran World Service. It's the overseas aid arm of our church. So um, you can come along and just find out just exactly um, what kind of work um, the ALWS does over there. Um, RSVPs are, are due in um, tomorrow week. So if you're interested in coming, please put your name down on the list in the church foyer or just come and let me know. Thank you. Thank you. And Joy, I might hand to you straight away as well. 
Hi, everyone. So I'm here to advertise and promote our women's ministry that's just started up here in the church. Um, we had um, a meeting uh, prior to COVID. We were all excited about getting started and then COVID hit and put the kibosh on everything. So we're starting up again now. Uh, we've had one get together and that was our afternoon tea for Mother's Day a couple of weeks ago and it was a really lovely afternoon. We had lots of people come along. Um, a, a great uh, kickoff for women's ministry. On that day, we gave out a survey for everybody to fill in to see what they would like to see happen in women's ministry. And the great majority said that they wanted to grow in their faith and um, to share in, in community. And so, um, to that end, our next event is. Um, going to be held here in our church hall on June the 20th and I've got some little flyers that I'd love to give out to you as uh, you leave this morning um, and we're going to have our beautiful vivacious Rowena Scott come and talk to us. Uh, many of you would know her, many of, uh, of you mums through our school you would know her and she is going to come and speak to us about how God has worked in her life and, and just share that with us. And we're going to have um, a delicious afternoon tea that day. This uh, is a free event for all women and we uh, encourage you to come. We'd love you to come. Um, please take a flyer, stick it on your fridge. And um, it, I do need RSVPs for this. Uh, all the information's on there. Uh, and if you need help with babysitting or transport, please let us know because we don't want to let those things get in the way of you coming along and, and being built up in your faith and sharing that time with, um, with other women. So um, I'll leave that thought with you. Please take one. Uh, if I run out, oh, I'm happy to take your name and, and email address or phone number and um, get one to you at some point. All right, thank you. And uh, also a thank you to everyone who helped out uh, at the street stall uh, our church held up the street during the week. Um, there is a few goodies left over. Just, uh, just in the foyer as you leave, there's a few plants and, and bits and pieces out there. If you're interested, you know, grab one of those and there's a donation tin there just to drop a few dollars in. That'll be appreciated. Uh, also, this coming week is actually Chappie Week. Um, so if you're interested in supporting school chaplaincy uh, and chaplains in, in the public school system, there are some flyers on the table there as you leave. Feel free to grab one and, and financially support that great cause. They do a fantastic job in our public school system. Um, so yeah, feel free to support that as well. Um, and one last thing, if you are looking for some holiday fun for your kids, Lutheran Youth of Queensland run a series of camps over the uh, June and July school holidays. Um, there's camps from grade, for kids in grade 3 all the, through, all the way through to grade 12. If you're interested in maybe um, getting involved in some of those camps, um, either at the Sunshine Coast or at Highfields, um, there's camps all over the place, um, come and have a chat to me. I can get you some details. Um, there's also some financial subsidies available for people. Um, chat to me about that as well. Or go and see Dave at school. Dave has all that information as well. Um, so, yeah, talk to us and, and get involved in that way if you like. Uh, I think that's about all for me. Pastor Rob, you got something to add today? Yeah, just great to see you all here this morning. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like this experience coming together and, and for the kids' service, this is pretty much how, our, how this 10.30 service looks. It's pretty much this. So um, if you like this kind of thing, then, uh, then come along any time. And one more thing, as you leave, you'll find yourself tempted by coffee on the left so please avail yourself of that um, there'll be somebody there to help you with that in a covid safe way so have a great week we'll uh, see you sh again soon god bless and also, also guys as you leave uh, you will, will have noticed we weren't able to pass an offering a plate around this morning uh, due to covid stuff we can't do that but there is some baskets um, at the end of the pews there as you leave. If you'd like to financially support the church here in our mission and ministry, feel free to, to place a few dollars in there as well. Um, good morning and uh, have a great week, guys. <laughs>